Greetings, pilots, and welcome to Fly's Flight Academy. My name is Kovakis, otherwise known as Flight Tech Owens Vator. And today, we're going to be continuing on with our ship breakdowns and our gunship class. Today, we're going to be looking at the Condor. Um, this gunship is a bit of a weird one, as it's actually the mid-range variant of a gunship. It only has the slug railgun as an option, so creativity and aggression kind of meld with this ship you really have to be smart with how you play to really get some decent value out of the ship it's not a bad gunship by any means it is just a different play style um when we get into bombers there's another th there's honestly another bomber that kind of does the same thing this condor does in in sense of like it's just weird out of the bunch but um, once again, my final time saying this, the number one tip I can give every gunship is if you zoom out while you're aiming in your railgun, you'll gain more field of view and you'll be able to see more. This is how you practice your quick shots and this is how you're able to aim quicker and do all those fancy gunship stuff. Moving into the components for this ship, we actually have two fairly decent options here. Um, Burst lasers make their return for the gunships. These are really, really nice. I personally believe that these are technically better. Um, that's not necessarily from a raw statistical point. Well, it sort of is. They're, they just do more damage in that short range because when you're defending yourself with burst lasers, you really want that quick trade. You don't really want to. You don't really want to sit there and sustain fire someone. You really just want them dead, and you want them dead quick. And because this gunship is actually weird in the way that it fights, um, you actually really do want a good primary. And burst, la burst lasers are kind of favoring your really short range half of your damage profile that this ship kind of has going at it. Uh, you'll notice that when we get to the secondary options, a lot of the stuff is actually fairly short range. Uh, unlike the Comet Breaker, which actually extended the range of its two torpedo options, the Condor does some weird shenanigans with its options. So when we get there, we'll get there. Um, for your burst laser, you're going to be taking M crew firing arc and tracking and increase haul damage to just give you the consistency and extra damage you really want. Uh, light laser is honestly the same kind of role. Uh, once again, improve firing or tracking and increase haul damage for the same reasons. Uh, improve consistency, improve damage. Um, this choice is a bit different. It's not necessarily attaching you to that extreme CQC to get its full damage. It's giving you a little bit of extra range. Um, honestly, not much because the... The range of values on all of these options are really low. And that's yeah, kind of the curse of this ship. It really does feel like it's... If Heavy Laser was here instead of Laser, it would make slightly more sense. But even then, um, that's kind of non-cohesive choices. So I personally believe that either Burst or Light Laser are good. It really just comes down to preference and how comfortable you are in the close quarters combat. Moving on to your secondary weapons, um, these are some really, really weird choices. Uh, you just have one railgun in the form of the slug railgun, which is totally fine. The main benefit here is slug railgun already has shield piercing, so you don't really have to worry too much about shields to get a ton of damage out of here. So that's kind of neat. Uh, it also has armor. Uh, it also has armor pen. And it really has all the good things we need out of a railgun. It is the quintessential gunship railgun. It does damage, and it does it well. That's really all that there is to it. I personally exclusively run the railgun. The difference here is, is you're not using the railgun at that 15,000 meters. You are using this in, like, 6,000 meter ranges. And... The Condor actually asks a lot for gunship players. It it really is the 
and I hate to say this because all gunships have the same skill ceiling, but this is really the aggressive gunship. Um, if you are one of those people that are used to quick shotting people and can really just shotgun someone with a railgun, then this is going to be for you because you're able to. And actually, I would probably flip these around. I would have my railgun in the other slot because I I do the prep. I do the prep, and then the, yeah. So this this will get you a lot of mileage if you're used to those quick firing scenarios where you really just have to charge charge a slug, fire it, and then move, charge, fire, charge, fire, kind of following that pattern a bit. Uh, the weird part of it is your options. Cluster missiles is here. I am immediately going to tell you to not choose this. It really doesn't synergize here because the Condor is still slow. And cluster missiles, for them to be good, you really need to be keeping in range. It does, doesn't really have that much range increase. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's the same as it would be... Okay, no, it has an extra 500 meters, so it is slightly longer range, but it's not enough to where you can really long range with these, so I would still recommend not using cluster missiles. Um, they really don't fit into any playstyle here, and honestly, that's, that's the detriment of the missile. So your main two options are interdiction and EMP. And the funky thing that happened with these is EMP actually got a range increase. Um, it's to 8,400 8, meters, which, again, I want to say is fairly long. Yeah, it's an extra 300 meters, I think. Is that? It's an extra 700 meters. So it's a decent range increase, and it's a solid option. Interdiction, on the other hand, did not get the same treatment. Um, it was left at the same range as cluster missiles. And I'm pretty sure this is the only ship that actually has interdiction missiles. So it kind of sucks because the unique option that like seems cool here is the, a fairly weak option. That said, I still think interdiction has a place. Um, it's... It, it, there's a double missile build here where you run MP interdiction. It's kind of the same philosophy as the Comet Breakers, double torpedoes, but a lot closer range or utility focused. That said, it is still it's still a fun option, and honestly, it's fairly enjoyable. I honest, I would argue that the introduction clusters are maybe better if you're going to run that build, but if you're planning on running the railgun build. I highly suggest EMP as your first choice. Um, sorry, I have to scroll extremely far in my notes because I've I've kind of gone off script here. Um, I believe that the EMP does fill the position that the ship wants, as it is kind of this slippery slight sniper kind of thing. We are you are staying slightly within range of EMP moving in to EMP someone so they can't escape with their engine ability. And that's kind of the crucial bit here. You're using EMP as an actual, like, disabler to stop people from being able to escape you offensively, not necessarily defensively. Um, that said, there is a... It, it kind of does the same thing that their EMPs do. You really want people to burn, either burn resources or just straight up EMP them. If if you're not actually getting the damage from the EMP, it's slightly more detrimental here because you kind of need every bit of damage you can get, especially since your primaries aren't going to help you at the ranges that this that this works in. Um, because this is four hundred, and then about. It'll just about kill someone. It's not going to quit. One shot someone, I believe you'll need to take one and a half railgun shots. Essentially, it means a full charge and then a, a little over half a shot. Because 25% is the cutoff, so I believe it's more like 60% of the charge. And that'll kill them. Um, but it, it's a bit more kind of tricksy 
than the other options. Um, that said, for tier 4, you're going to be taking increased damage. This is to just really help you try and burst someone. At tier 5, you're going to take engine suppression. As I stated, this is to help people, or this is to help you, this is to help you stop people from running away from you, so you're able to line up your railgun shot that little bit easier. It's obviously not going to stop them from running because they'll still have their engine ability, or they'll still have their just raw engine power. But it's okay. It's kind of a kind of a risk you have to take. Um, the other build for this, and I alluded to it a little bit, is kind of a weird one because the cluster and interdiction are the same range. I actually, I believe this was intentional. I sincerely believe that they wanted you to run it. Cluster interdiction with the short range cannons. And it seems really silly. And that's because it is. But it it might just be good enough because interdiction is actually helping you. Because interdiction is slowing someone. And it's like really crippling them. It's a 50% slow and a 50% turning rate decrease. Which is pretty nasty in terms of like this type of effect sabotage probe is stronger but this is a pretty close second um of note this is actually the only missile i've ever seen that has a reload a reload speed reduction huh would you look at that this really is just a unique missile i've honestly never used these so I, I really don't have good advice for this. But once again, this is kind of a theory build more than a in-practice build. I, If I ever use the Condor, it's still the Slug AMP build. Because it's just closest to what I'm comfortable with. Um, that said, since if you're running a double missile build, again, you're going to be running probably Jorgen. For the increased ammo capacity and all that jazz. Of note, this isn't actually getting you too much ammo. It's only 19 here, and that's because I do believe these have less ammo at base. I'm not actually certain. Mm, yeah, they actually seemingly have less ammo than they normally would on like a scout. So, unless I'm totally wrong, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long day, I'm sorry. I'm bulk recording a lot of these. But the essentially, you're just trying to really push out how much you can do with these. As such, since they're the same range, and you're kind of playing in a close range scenario with this, taking increased ammo here is a bit silly. Um, realistically, because of how much you're going to be spamming clusters in comparison to the interdictions, with which also, even with that reload time reduction, is still sitting at a solid six second reload, which is actually nine seconds at base. I didn't know that. That's a little rough, actually. Actually, now that I think about it, let's see, you. These are probably sitting at a really high. Yeah, these are sitting at seven second base, so you really do need that cooldown reduction in the cruise trigger tree. I was kind of glossing that over because I didn't think it was that bad. Um, moving swiftly on, I do believe this is an okay build. Um, you can run it. It's probably it's it's not going to do the most damage in the world. To be perfectly honest, the railgun is your best option here. Railgun EMP is just a better build. But this seems funny to me, so I'm mentioning it anyways because. If someone does run it and has a good time, I'll be happy about that. Uh, I'm personally a fan of the sillier builds in GSF because they're fun. And, you know, we aim to have fun in video games. That's what they're for. Of note, if you are running this build, Tier 4 on Interdiction is probably... The difference is only 3 ammo. It's, it's probably the increased range to bring it up to that 6... Uh, 660 or 6600. Um, this is just to get you 
that little extra bit of range to pre-fire the interdiction before you get into cluster range. And I honestly believe that would be a pretty nice strategy because they'll be slowed and that'll actually help you to get in that engagement range. So that's always helpful. And at tier five, uh, engine targeting is the way to go. This is just to help solidify that essentially engine cripple that this is doing to your enemies. And for cluster missile, you're going to be taking increased ammo capacity and double volley. This is exclusively just for damage. And essentially, this is to mitigate the double volleys ammo capacity having. Uh, so that's that. I should swap these around because if I don't now, I never will. Moving on to shields, these, these are kind of the same scenario as the coral, actually. Um, so you have two really, really, really good options here that honestly fit both playstyles I was just mentioning. Um, Distortion Field is a lot better with that railgun build because you're still going to be far enough away that using Distortion Field and attempting to escape is, is going to be really beneficial to you. And, I mean, Distortion Field in itself is just always good for that extra missile lock break. Feedback Shield. Now, there is a lot to say about this. Because on the ship in particular, I sincerely believe that this is where Feedback Shield is at its peak. Because of the ship's straight up just an aggressive disposition i believe that the extra bit of damage that this is giving you with either of the two builds that i just brought up is gonna be good enough for you to potentially kill someone quickly um i imagine the burst potential of that short range build again i've, I've never played with it because i think it's silly but i believe the burst potential with feedback shield might actually be more than the than the half charges of the slug. I don't think it'll ever like fully outpace the burst of EMP slug. Um, that is just a raw two thousand damage burst. So I, I believe the feedback short range build is more focused on sustained damage, and as such, feedback shield giving you a nice little pop of damage might actually make that a lot more viable. Um, but as such, on feedback shields, you can actually run crit feedback. This is so you can potentially crit someone, and it just does a lot more damage. Honestly, anything to get more value out of feedback is nice. The engine reduction here, or the weapon and engine reduction, is only 10, so it's not really that good. It does kind of stack up with interdiction, but it's not enough for, you, for it to matter. So I still think the crit and praying that you get that 20% pop is pretty nice especially since 20 percent crit in gsf is actually a decent bit so it'll go off a lot more than you think moving to engines we have some i, I specifically wrote this in my notes <laughs> time for some spicy choices because boy does this have some weird ones it's got power dive and retro thrusters <laughs> um these, these are options that should not be on this ship <laughs> because it's really weird, but it fits so thematically well. So I'm actually going to talk about Fire Eye first because believe it or not, this is the safe option <laughs> of, this, of, this, of the two. Um, it is pretty much the, the escape option here. Um, none of these are going to help you escape and it's still an engine or it's still a missile break. So it's kind of cool. Uh, once again, you really have to get used to the power dive movement, but on gunships, it's a bit slower, so it's kind of easier to get used to, but even so, it's still a weird movement, so it does take practice to get used to. Uh, tier 3, still an increased turning rate. <laughs> Moving on. Retro thrusters. Um, easily, without a single shadow of a doubt, this is my favorite engine choice on this ship. And that is because this provides so much, so much extra, and honestly, it's needed, uh, survivability to the ship, as well as giving you the insane potential that the engine already has. Um, I've, I've stated it in every video that I've talked about retro thrusters. The offensive capabilities of retro thrusters cannot be understated. They are insane. Um, one thing that 
I actually wrote as a note because I specifically wanted to remember to say this in this video. I have never personally tried, and I, I actually don't believe you can do this. I've never tried to retro in your railgun. So I've never tried to like railgun, or I've never tried to like retro thrust and then take a railgun shot. I don't think you can, but if you can, then by all means, please go out there and like rubber band, <laughs> rubber band railgun someone because, man. I can just imagine the look on someone's face by getting like seeing some seeing a gun shape retro thruster straight in your face, only for them to like come back out of the retro and just pop you with a railgun shot. <laughs> Something about that just is blissfully beautiful. Um, for tier three again, uh, increased turning radius. There's man, oh, the Condor is such a weird ship, but honest, honestly. Um, I personally have a, a, a soft spot for this ship in my heart. Uh, it's it's such a goofy ship, and I don't know why I'm like this, but I just love this. I love the dumb ships of Jason, <laughs> and this is one of them. Uh, there are a lot of there are surprising there are a surprising amount of people that played Condor to success, and honestly, I applaud those people. I can't do good with this ship, but I love playing it because it's just so silly. That it makes me laugh every time I like actually get good kills with it. So uh, hopefully you'll have the same amount of same amount of silliness and fun that I have with this. And I, I sincerely don't recommend that short range build. But if you're crazy, like I am sometimes, because it, it really seems fun try it because i guarantee you there's that like five percent chance that i'm right and it is actually a fun and good build but there's also like the 95 percent chance that you should just stick with slug and emp that said that's all for our gunship breakdowns moving on we're gonna have the bombers uh doing those last three and then we're gonna do a loadout video going kind of going over what i believe you should do to kind of hone in what your loadout should be and kind of how you should build your preferences and all that jazz and ships that I believe are staples in GSF that should sit in the loadout anyways. Uh, but for now, I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the skies.